What's up guys, Darius Kozin here. Welcome to another great React tutorial. In this one, we're gonna talk about the React Context API, use context, create context, all of that good stuff. Make sure to watch until the end of the video, because if you do, you probably will never have to watch another video on context ever again. So let's get into it. Cool, so context in React. Honestly, the simple way for you to think about this is just think of it as a way for you to store data, any kind of data, and have it be accessible to components, no matter where they are in your application in the tree, even if it's for the entire application, to have them access that data without having to pass it through props. One of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of React developers doing and something that is very common to make as a junior developer is to have these long chains of props that we call prop drilling to get data from one component to another. So really the way this looks like is you, you have one component that has some piece of data, you pass it to the next component, which then passes it to the next component and so on. You end up having these long chains of props and it becomes really messy and hard to maintain as a code base. So context is a way to avoid that, is a way to have some state that is accessible by multiple components without having to do all of this prop drilling, all of these chains of props. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to look at an application, we're gonna look at this problem and how to fix it with context. So I have here this simple application which only has a user, which has a property is subscribed and a name is you. And the reason it's here is because, did you know that over 85% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed, which is really interesting because you're here, you're watching a tutorial on React, you're learning a lot, and you're not subscribed, odds are. So I put here subscribe true with the hopes that now, by now, you're already subscribed. So if you're not, make sure to tap that subscribe button because it really, really does help me out a lot. So we have this user that is being passed here to dashboard. Dashboard receives user. So let's look at dashboard. Dashboard is a very simple component. It receives the user as props and then it passes it on to sidebar and to profile. The profile and the sidebar are simple components that take in the user and then just re return some HTML to display the user. There's nothing too fancy. The problem really is this dashboard component. You see this dashboard component takes in this user as props but doesn't actually do anything with it. The only thing that it does is it sends it to sidebar and it sends it to profile. So now let's look at how we would solve this with context. So remember I said that context is a way for you to have data that is shared, that is accessible across different components without having to pass it through props. So that's what we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to get rid of these props from dashboard because that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to remove the props. So dashboard will no longer have this. We also have to remove it here from the types and we have to remove it here as well. Now you're gonna see that sidebar and profile are complaining that we need the user, which we don't have, but that's fine because we're also going to remove the user from here because again, the goal is to not have to pass the user. The goal is to have the user accessible from anywhere in the tree without having to pass it around. So sidebar and profile will no longer receive the user as props, which means that we have to get rid of it here. We have to get rid of it here and then we have to get rid of it here, and we finally have to get rid of it here. So now we have some components that need a user, but there's no user anymore. The user is lost, right? That's okay, because we're gonna fix that right now with context. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a context, have it hold our user, and then wrap everything in dashboard with that context, and then everything inside of dashboard, which means all of dashboard and the sidebar and the profile and any further subcomponents that can arise out of it, will have access to the user directly without it having to be needed to pass through props. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new file, we're going to call it context.ts.ts and then I'm going to close this so that you can see. And then what we are going to do is we are going to create our context. So what we'll do is we'll do export const dashboard context because that is the context that we want to make. It's the dashboard context. And that is going to be equal to a function from React that is called create context. Create context and then I'm going to import it here from React and then yeah. That is how you create a context. Now this context says that it expected one argument but got zero because it needs a default value. So for it to have a default value, we have to initialize it and I'm gonna do first of all undefined 
and then we are going to add something to this context because right now there's no type information about what kind of value this context can have. If I hover over this, you're going to see that it's a context of undefined. But that's not true. That's not what we want. We want to hold the user here. So the way you do that is you open here a caret like this, and then you put user, and then we are going to import user from, actually it's from here. We're going to import user and then we have to also do undefined like this. So what we've now set with this context is we want to create a context that can be a user or undefined. Now, why undefined? This is a bit of a tricky part and you really need to spend a little bit of time and listen carefully to properly understand this. But ideally, our context is going to hold a user. It shouldn't hold anything else but a user. But because of the fact that we have to create the context here in this file outside of any component, outside of this component, for example, we do not have access to the user at this point, right? If I wanted to do something, I don't have access to the user. The user is in the state here. It is localized inside of this component. And so what we're going to do is we're going to assign the user to our context, but initially our context is going to be undefined. We have no way around it, which means that we have to type this as being either user or undefined. And this is going to be very important a little bit later on in the video because we're going to have to do something to account for this possibility of it being undefined. But let's not worry about that for now. Let's just create and wrap our context, wrap our dashboard with our context. So now that we have the context, what we can do is we can come here and we can do dashboard context and then we can import it here. Let me just uh, fix these imports right here because it'll be a bit simpler. And then we want to create now what we call a provider, right? We have a context, so now we want to provide it to a certain set of components. So the syntax for that is dot provider, right? And then we're going to open this and then our dashboard is going to go directly inside. Now VS Code is telling me that I'm missing something and it's saying that property value is missing in type. It's because we have not given it a value, right? We said that this context can be a user or undefined, but we haven't given it any value. So how we fix that is we do value and then we pass it our user here right? That's how we now get access to the same user that was previously passed down through props. Now we get access to it through this dashboard context dot provider. So that is going to be very useful. Now, if we go back here, we don't need to do anything to dashboard besides maybe remove this unused import because dashboard no longer needs to have the job of taking the user and passing it down to sidebar. What we can then do is go to sidebar and here, instead of having user, which uh, instead of having user getting passed through props, we can actually remove this, we don't need this, we can get the user directly from the context. So the way we do that is we use a consumer, right? Initially, we created a provider of the context, and now we are going to consume that context. And the way you do that is with a handy hook from React called use context. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do const user equals use context from React. And then I'm going to give it dashboard context. And then again, apologies for this, but we want to do an import like this. And then we have our user here. And what I want to do here is I just want to place it as well to profile. And now we have access to our user directly inside of our component without it having to be passed to dashboard. Dashboard no longer cares about user, which is great because it doesn't need to do anything with it. We've completely bypassed having to pass this value around through props. And now we have access to user here through this use context, which is using the context of dashboard context, which we know is a user, or if you're astute, user type undefined. So this is a problem. This is a problem that we have now. The user here can be undefined. The reason it can be undefined is because we've typed it as being user type undefined, user or undefined. And even though we have set the user here and we know for ourselves, we know that this user is always going to have a value in this context, we cannot guarantee that, for example, someone forgets to wrap the dashboard in a context provider and then these components here try to access a context 
and it ends up being undefined. We cannot guarantee that, and that could happen. A developer could come in and forget to wrap the necessary components in a provider. And remember, the way context works is everything that is wrapped inside of this provider has access to that value, which means that they can use this use context. If it's not wrapped, or if you try to use this use context anywhere else where it's not with the, the appropriate provider, you're going to get a value of undefined. That is how React works, right? And we need to deal with this. We could, we can just ignore this, right? We could put a question mark here. We could put a question mark here, right? That would solve the problem. It would no longer throw any errors and it would render out normally in the UI. But that is not the best approach because for one, we have to put all of these question marks everywhere, which is a little bit dirty and we don't really want to do that. And in any case where we forget to wrap the context properly, we're just not going to see anything here because this will evaluate to undefined if user is not there and that it will just render render nothing. It will not throw an error. It will not let us know that something is wrong and it's going to make it much harder to debug. So we need to figure out a way to not use these question marks and to get this user to always be defined and handle that logic elsewhere. So that's what we're going to do now. What we're going to do is we're going to create a custom hook that is going to handle this logic for us and always return to us the user if it is there. And then from that, we can use this hook in all of our components and get the functionality without having to put all of these question marks or do any extra logic. This hook will handle all of the logic for us and it's going to be reusable across any parts of our application. So we're going to come here and we're now going to create that hook. So what we'll do is we'll export a new function called use user context. This is what we're going to be used. This is what we're going to use in our application to handle this. And then that one is going to return is going to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to take this user from this use context that we have here. We're going to take this logic because we want to reuse this logic across components. That is why we're extracting it in a separate hook. So we're going to put it here. We are going to import use context. We're essentially doing the same thing that we did here, just in a custom hook, which is going to be useful. Now this user has the same thing, has user or undefined. And now we're going to handle this case here. What if user is undefined? What do we want to do? Well, what we want to do is we want to first check if user is undefined. So if user undefined, and then what we want to do here is we want to throw an error if user is undefined, because we know that we have provided user here and we know that for ourselves. So we don't expect an error here. We expect the user to be there. However, like I said, we cannot guarantee that this will always be the case. We cannot guarantee that another developer or even us in the future might forget to do that. And for, for that reason or any other reason, user might be undefined. If that happens, we want to throw an error. We want to be aware, us as the developers, that something went wrong, that we forgot to do something, and so we want to throw an error. If we didn't throw an error, like I said before, we might not realize what actually is going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to do throw new error, and then we are going to say use user context must be used with a dashboard context. So now if we ever find ourselves in any situation where we forget to do this, and then we try to use this hook and user is undefined, our application is going to throw an error. We're going to know about the error and we're going to say, oh, we forgot to do this. And so we're going to go and fix it and deal with our error. That is the way that you create custom hooks. And that is the way that you use context with a custom hook. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to return the user. Right. So this hook, as you can see here, it returns a user. And if we get to this line to line 14, then that means that user was not undefined. So our error did not throw. And here we are guaranteed that user is always going to be user and it's never going to be undefined. That is what we want out of this hook. And with this, we can now come into our sidebar and instead of use context, we can just do use user context do that. And then we can replace it here as well. Get rid of this context and then get rid of this dashboard context. Because again, everything is extracted in this custom hook, which does all the logic for us. And then in our component, we have user here, which is a user, it's no longer undefined, 
we no longer need to add any question mark and we can render our UI exactly how we want to. This is the power of context and this is the power of custom hooks. Cool, so there you go. That was the React Context API. I really hope that you've understood this. I really hope that you now understand how to use Context, how to create your own custom hook with it. Please do take a moment to really go through this video once again and really just make sure that you understand this because this is very important. And also understand and do more research about when to use Context versus when to use a state management library and try to see if you can find any library or any part of your code that could use a Context and try applying it. This is a very useful feature of React and it should be used when it's necessary. So if you've enjoyed this video, once again, please do subscribe to the channel because it really does help me out a lot. It shows me that you enjoy these types of videos and that you want more and I will make more, don't worry. Also leave me a like for the YouTube algorithm and yeah, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you once again for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Ciao.